that time than right now. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thankful for another wonderful opportunity to just be with like-minded believers where we can come together and we can take a look at all that Jesus Christ has provided for us and has made available for us uh, through his death, through his burial, and through his resurrection. We just are, are grateful just for, again, just the opportunity to be a part of the, the land, in the land of the living. And that's the living in Christ, not just yes, the, yes. the living in this world. Because the Bible speaks of that men are dead in sins yes, and trespasses. Yes. But those of us who have come to faith in Jesus Christ yes. are those who have been made alive, yes. truly made alive. Because we are a part now of the living one. And that's Jesus Christ. And he's the one who has provided for us everything that we need uh, through his death and through his burial and through his resurrection. And we receive all of this by faith in him. Yes. Simple faith in him. Not by telling them we're going to get it together. We're going to fix it. We're going to stop this. And all that we attempt to do in order to gain from God. But God says, I have provided everything in my son. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is come and trust in him. And you'll see the manifestation of everything that you need, everything that I have provided in him. And with that being said, with this simple message, this simple, easy way of man trusting in Jesus Christ uh, for the grace that he has provided. Although this is so simple, we have an enemy who is a deceiver of all mankind. He attempts to deceive. And what he is attempting to do is to come against that beautiful, wonderful message, that beautiful, wonderful grace right. that is provided in Jesus Christ. He seeks to hinder man from coming and receiving that. And that's ultimately what we have been talking about for actually the last couple of months, which is mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. We've been talking about the spiritual warfare of the believer. And so many, again, uh, um, don't quite understand that it is a fight again to continue to walk in and receive everything that Jesus Christ has provided. That's ultimately what this fight is all about. And that's what we've been talking about the last couple of months. And we're actually today are going to conclude this series for now on spiritual warfare. And the last thing I wanted to talk about within this uh, spiritual warfare series is the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. that, that is ultimately what this fight is about. It is a fight of faith, a fight to continue, for, to, to continue in the faith, to continue in a place of trusting in Jesus Christ according to the truth and, and uh, for the purpose of receiving everything that he has provided for us. And mm -hmm. our foundation scriptures for this entire series has been over here in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, where it says this, Jasmine Elder, where it says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. He says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, uh, um, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. He says, since this is the case, he says, therefore, you have to take up the whole armor of God. Why do you need to take up the whole armor of God? That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all mm -hmm. to stand. And ultimately, again, this armor is to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the enemy. And again, it shows here in verse 12 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against man. This isn't a fight uh, of man, man on man. This isn't something that we can build ourselves up through physical uh, works through physical weapons. We can't uh, physically go to the gym and work out and be able to fight with, uh, fight this this uh, uh, fight. 
that we have coming against us because we don't fight against flesh and blood, but there are principalities, there are powers that we've discussed, all of these things that are actively working in the kingdom of darkness that again, that calls everyone who is in alignment with that or who is connecting themselves with that kingdom. These principalities and powers and spiritual hosts of wickedness causes people to then align with that kingdom that they're operating in. And he's saying that that is again what the enemy has in place and he has his tricks in place in order to get man to operate in that kingdom so that all that is within his kingdom can rule and reign in that person's life. That's what the enemy is constantly seeking to do and he has wiles or tricks that he has in place, lies, deceptions, that he has in place in order to convince man to operate over in that kingdom of darkness instead of uh, for those of us who are in uh, Jesus Christ who have now access to the kingdom of light. We are part of that. We have the opportunity to operate in the kingdom of light, but Satan is attempted to get us to operate in the kingdom that we've known our entire lives, which is the kingdom of darkness. And he has tricks in place in order to keep the people that he already has, he wants to keep them in that place of the kingdom of darkness. And for those who have actually been brought out and brought over to the kingdom of light, he wants them again to go with what is familiar. That's right. You're familiar That's with right. that kingdom that you've been operating in in your entire life. And he wants to convince people, continue in that direction, continue in that way. And he does it all again through tricks. Lies, deceptions. And so it then goes on to talk about staying there for, he says, and he remember in the last part of verse 13, he says, therefore take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So he says, take up this whole arm of God for that purpose. And he goes here in verse 14, he says, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, one of the armor of God, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, another piece of armor, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, another piece of armor. He says, above all, taking the shield of faith, another piece of armor, he says, with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the, the wicked one. And if we notice, he says, above all the other pieces, taking the shield of faith. All right. And the reason for that is because all of these other pieces of armor are all connected with faith. Yes. Faith in the yes. Lord Jesus Christ. Faith is, again, connected to everything. That breastplate of righteousness. We've talked about that before. That righteousness is a, a um, connection of faith and love. LJ, no. Of faith and love. When those two things work together, when I have faith in God's love for me, he's saying what? That is like a breastplate that is over my heart, that protects my heart. And so again, it's connecting, it's connected to faith. Again, when it talks about uh, uh, in verse 15, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. He's talking about always having that good news of what Jesus Christ has done that allows for peace with God to be what now your walk is affected by. Well, how does that gospel work in me? Through faith, mm -hmm. through faith. Again, and again, the truth, having stand there for having girded your waist with truth. You have to have the truth of God's word and live by faith in that truth again so that's why he says above all taking the shield of faith he says which with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts LJ, LJ. with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one so again we show that faith faith is extremely uh important and it's ultimately again that which God is saying this fight is all about, this fight is all about you being uh, um, in the place of not departing from the faith. 
And look at what it says over here, what Paul wrote at the end of his life to Timothy, his, his protege, the one he uh, built up in the faith and, and he, that he, uh, um, he discipled. Paul said to him at the end of his life, he says, I have uh, fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. He says, I have finished the race. And look at what he says, I have kept the faith. And when he says, I have fought the good fight, the good fight that he fought is what kept, had him at a place where he kept the faith. That's and, right. he, and so he shows us again that that's the fight. That's what the armor that God gives us for is to be able to fight the good fight of faith. The yes. good fight where the yes. enemy is constantly attempting to hinder us and cause us to stray away from the faith. And God is saying, I'm attempting to keep you in the faith that what you can experience everything that it is that I've provided for you. Everything that I have made available for you. And Paul says here that I have kept the faith. I fought a good, excuse me, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. And that's the finishing of the race. He's talking about this Christian race where, again, from the time that we are saved until the time that we leave this earth, not everyone, sadly to say, will be able to say that they kept the faith. That's right. But Paul was at, and because, but God is saying, I have armor in place. I have things in place to be able to keep you in the faith and keep you from departing from the truth. And that's what uh, Paul even told to Timothy. In, in 1 Timothy, he says this in verse uh, chapter 6, verse 12. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Showing again that that's what this fight is about. He says, lay hold on eternal life yes. to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Yes, you have confessed the good confession before people, but again, don't let the end of your life be where you have departed from the faith, that although you confessed the good uh, confession, you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ in the beginning, you truly did come to faith in him, but then you departed from the faith. Don't let that happen. So fight the good fight of faith. And that's what God is saying, that this weaponry, that I have in place is there to protect you because what the enemy is attempting to do is he's attempting to get you to stray away from the faith. Mm -hmm. He's wanting you to go back to what you are familiar with, yes. where you were yes. before yes. and how you lived in your mentality and in your trust, he, how you yes. lived and operated before. He, the enemy is saying, that's what you're used to. Continue down that road. Mm -hmm. But God has says, you have started something new in trusting in my son, you're starting on a new path. Continue down that path. Mm -hmm. And I have weaponry in place to be able to aid in you going down that road. Uh, to be able to keep you down that road. And so again, when we talk about faith, initially when faith comes, it shows us over here how it comes. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing. Yes. And hearing by the word of God. So when a person hears, and he was in that grouping of scripture, speaking specifically of hearing the good news of what Jesus Christ has done. The good news of what Jesus Christ has provided. He says when a heart hears that good news, then what faith can stir up in that heart. Faith can come and begin to work in that heart when that heart hears and beholds all that Jesus Christ has provided. When that heart hears of what it is that Jesus Christ has done, that's when faith can come. Right. It's, and it, and it's, it's a, a aid and a work of God where he's the one who does that. It's not something where I just try to convince myself to believe. I got to make myself believe. It's when the truth of what tr Jesus Christ has done meets up with the reality I know about myself. Mm -hmm. I know I can't fix me. I know I can't get it together. I try and it ain't worked. And when that meets with the truth that Jesus has provided everything that I was trying to provide for myself, I was trying to do this to, to get right with God and I could never get to that place. And now my heart hears that Jesus did what was necessary 
for me to be right with him. Then faith in him will begin to stir up. And the same uh, pathway, when I heard, or when I when I was saying to myself, okay, if I could just get this together and be better at this, and it's just, at times, see, like it just got worse. It's like, okay, the more I tried, the, the worse it got. The, and, and that meets up with the good news where God says, I know you can't fix you. And I have provided for you in my son the ability to be changed by me and not by you. When I hear that, then faith can be stirred up on the inside of an individual to where a person doesn't have to try to convince themselves to believe. Mm -hmm. It's just that that word matches perfectly with what I know Amen. to be the truth about myself. Right. And go ahead, sir. Right. Amen. Uh, uh, Father, the arm of God, uh, I look at Christ as our first example who oh. basically armored himself. Yes, yes. Everything he did, he, when he walked, yes. his foot led to the truth. He oh, spoke my, the truth. My goodness. Yes. The shell, he always he he always referred back to the father. Yes. Whatever yes, he yes. spoke. Yes. Was yes. Nothing of his own, but whatever my the goodness, father yes. said. He said, whatever I, I hear the father say that I do. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's what we gotta look at as far as um the armor of God. Yeah. But since he came in likeness of sinful flesh, mm -hmm. but nevertheless he didn't commit no sin. Uh -huh. We did. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But he shows us we have the ability oh, my. in this flesh. My God. But only through him only through can him. we conquer oh, sin. My, my, my. And, yeah. that, and that is exactly right. And that's again, as that faith comes initially, that faith continues to be developed and, yes. and grows on the inside of us yes. to where we start to trust him more and more and start to see more and more of the change yes. that he's provided. Again, as we grow, as we learn. And again, just like you said, with the armor, as we continue to, to learn and trust him, we'll, we won't fall for the deception of the enemy where the enemy wants us to try to think that, okay, that the same way we used to think, that I gotta fix myself. Mm -hmm. I gotta get myself to, together. See, that's part of the enemy's tactics. But like you said, just like with Jesus, he had always referred to the Father. And so right. what did the Father right. say? The Father said, you can't fix you. Right. He said, trust exactly. in me. What the enemy telling you, now you fix yourself. Mm -hmm. You get yourself together. And when I have that truth, of what Christ has done and what God has said according to his word, then again, that will then al allow me to block the enemy's lies that attempts to get me to walk down that road of, of, of self-deception, of, of, of co convincing myself that I can fix myself mm -hmm. when I know I really can. Mm -hmm. and, and go ahead, sir. Hey, the door comes to mind, you always hear that cliche. I'm gonna fight to the finish. Oh. And Christ, oh. he said it was finished. Oh my. Amen. <laughs> you gotta consider what he went oh, on my. to get to that finish point. My, my, my. And you will know that when he finished, you do uh 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 you allow yourself to go through the same thing. Mm, uh, mm, mm. Uh, that Satan have no defense. My goodness, and he, he doesn't again. And, and again, what we're talking about is this the conclusion of a spiritual warfare series where we're talking about what the enemy is attempting to ultimately come against in this spiritual warfare is he's attempting to come against us believing in the truth of what God is providing. He's wanting us to go back to, again, the line of thinking that we had before. Now we've come to faith, faith and we trust that Jesus Christ, through what he did, is what makes me right with God, not my goodness. What does the enemy right. want us to do? Think the way we used to think. That, you know what, I, I gotta, if I stop doing this and if I get this together and I fix this, then God will accept me. See, that's a deception of the enemy. And that's a warfare that you have where the enemy is constant. He's constant with his attacks, and his attack ultimately, again, is to come against us believing in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. believing and, and coming to a place of faith uh, that comes by the hearing of, of yes. the word of God. Again, because before or prior to us coming to faith, this is what the Bible says was the outcome and, and the result of all of us. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1 through 3. It says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. He says, this is all before salvation, he said. He says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the 
prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Satan. Mm -hmm. According to his influence, his lies, his deception. See, all of that thinking that we had. I'm going to just pause right there. All of that thinking that we had that, oh yeah, I got to get myself together. I got to fix this. All of that was the deception of the enemy. All, all of that was, again, man uh, 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 coming to the place where he was... He, or him just living his life for the fulfilling of himself. Where it's just, I'm just doing me. All of that was the influence of the enemy, it says here. And that was the walking according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. He says, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. And in verse 3 he says, among whom also we all conducted ourselves. Meaning our lives was this type of conduct in the lust of our flesh. We were just living according to what we feel, whatever desire comes, that's just what we just do. He says, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. He's saying we were by nature just automatically, couldn't help it. Just doing this and doing that. And he says that that was the state of man being dead in sins and trespasses. But he says here, and you he made alive though, through faith in Christ, through trust in Christ now, you are now starting a new pathway right. through simple right. faith in Christ. Not through you saying, I got to fix this conduct, I got to get this together. He said all of that was the byproduct of being dead in sins and trespasses. Many what we were, and, and, and that was the byproduct of following the course of this world that was set by the by Satan, mm -hmm. where I just lived my life on the basis of me, whether it was through law, where I was saying, hey, you know what, I got to try to get this together, mm -hmm. and I keep, you know, failing, and just feeling guilty, and feeling condemned, or it was just, hey, I'm just doing me, I just, whatever, if I want to sleep with this woman, if I want to cuss this woman out, if I want to do this, I just do it. All of that was following that course of this world, and then all of a sudden, and he said that that was the state of being dead. And he said, then what? We came to faith in Christ and started a new pathway. A new pathway where now he begins to lead us in a different direction. And that's what we're going to show. Look at this right here. He says over in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 19. Look what he says. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you no longer walk. As the rest of the Gentiles walk. That's how we all used to walk, he's saying. He says, how? In the futility of our own minds. We were just living according to whatever we just saw it, whatever we just thought. And he says here, having their understanding darkened. He says, being alienated from the life of God, from, from the life and the nature of who God is, what God is wanting to work in and through us. He says, because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of heart he says who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness again this is pretty much saying the same thing we just read in Ephesians chapter 2 and he says what all of this is the result of people living by the futility of their own mind and their own dark and understanding he says, as a result of that, people give themselves over to lewdness. Now, it, it, again, it's, it's because of the darkened understanding that they have working in them and the futility of their mind. But look what he goes on to say in verse 20. He says, but you have not so learned Christ. When you came to faith in Christ, you started on a different pathway. And he says this, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the, uh, excuse me, yeah, uh, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you have put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And so just to break this down real quick, he's simply saying what? Before we lived according to our own mindsets, our own way, our own strength. We tried to fix us. We tried to get ourselves together. Or we just lived our lives, just with whatever we felt. And then all of a sudden, what, one day we came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we started on a new path now. Where now he is caught. And, and as we start this new path, what happens to the old? It's put away. Automatically. 
And then he says what? As you start to put start this pad, this new pad, he says what? You're going to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Remember what he said before? We live by what? The futility of our own minds. So what's happening now as we are learning Christ? We are what? Being renewed in the spirit. of our, our mindsets are changing. And I just, again, just to give you a quick picture of it, before I thought what? In my mind, I got to get this together. I got to fix that. But now I start trusting in Jesus Christ. I, I, I realize he's going to work in it through me. He's going to change. See how that's a change in mindset? Mm -hmm. Simply through faith. Right. Simply through faith. And it, it's a new pathway. And, and that old pathway is being put away. And he says that as we are renewed in the spirit of our minds, we're going to start now to put on the new man. To, to now, instead of again, the old desires that were coming as a result of us living according to the futility of our minds. Now we're going to have new desires that are being produced in us from this renewed mind. Through simple faith in Christ. And most of the time people would say, I got to Try to resist these desires. When he's saying no, those desires come as a result of this right here. Uh, according to this. So if this is changed and you're going and it's being renewed, the desires are going to be new. And as the desires are new, what happens? The behavior becomes new. All because faith. All because you started to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, my point with that is that this is the process of what happens as we live by faith in Jesus. It's all that as we live by faith in him, he starts to do this work of renewing us and starting to create us and change us and renew us by faith. And my point is that the enemy is again attempting to get people to stir away from the faith so that this doesn't happen. He wants people who are already unsaved. He doesn't want them to come to salvation so that this can won't happen. And for those of us who have come to faith in Jesus Christ, he doesn't want us to continue in the faith so that this doesn't happen. Because he still wants us at this place here where we walk according to the course of this world. That's what he wants. He still wants mankind mindset to be so full of himself to be so focused on him, to be so focused on what I deserve, what I'm supposed to get, what I'm supposed to make happen, what I have to do in and of myself. And God is saying, as you come to faith in Christ, it won't be about what you got to do, what you have to make happen, what you have to accomplish. It'll be about what Jesus did, what Jesus accomplished, and what he's going to do in and through me. And as a result of that, again, that's going to be a renewing of my mind and a changing of behavior and following this simple path of faith. Simple path of simple faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, so as we come to faith, this process starts to happen and the enemy wants to hinder that process. But again, this process starts to happen where we again put away the former and start the new. And again, so as that process is started, that process continues on after. Now look at what it says over here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse, starting at verse 11. And it says, and he himself, speaking of Jesus Christ, gave some, some people to be apostles, to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So he's talking about what people call the fivefold ministries or those that are within the church. And he says that this is the purpose in verse 12 for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So those that have come to faith in Jesus Christ, he, he says, I set now people in place. I already have the evangelists. That's the ones that go out and bring, aid in bringing people to faith. But I have the pastors and the teachers in the church for the equipping of those saints, those that have come to faith. They are equipped. Uh, for the work of the ministry. And look what he says. It's for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come mm -hmm. to the unity of the faith. I got to just pause right. right there. So after we have come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, now as we go to church and we have 
people in place that can continue to edify us and cause us to grow in the truth of Jesus Christ. He says here, again, the body of Christ is going to be edified and we're going to all come to the unity of the faith. Where again, initially when you come to salvation, you don't know everything. Uh, you know, you may know it. Jesus died for my sins and, and I'm all right with God now. But as we come to church and we, uh, we study our word, we learn more and more of what it is that Jesus Christ has done. And that is us being built up in the faith. That is us being edified. And again, and, the, and my point with that is that that is us coming to the unity of the faith. Mm -hmm. As we learn more and more of what Jesus Christ has done, we become united in what we believe. That's where right. all of us start to believe the same thing according to the truth. And again, he says in verse 13 that we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. He says to a perfect man or a mature man. He says, mm -hmm. that, that's what that word perfect means, a mature man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now watch this. He says that all this happens for the perfect, for the person who comes to church and, and or who studies their word and they edify it with the truth of Christ and they begin to grow and mature. Mm -hmm. Why? Verse 14. That we should no longer be children right. tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. He's saying here that again, the purpose of us growing and learning more and more is so that we don't fall for all of these deceptions out there mm -hmm. that men are presenting as the way of God, mm -hmm. as the truth of God. And again, my point with that is we come to this unity of the faith and the purpose of these trickery of men is to stir people away from the faith. And again, that's what we're talking about today, fighting the good fight of faith, where we start with faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and all the way up until the end of our lives, we maintain and grow that faith instead of being turned away from the faith. And the purpose of it again is so that we can begin to grow in Christ and learn of the truth of what he's done and understand that God is saying that I have protection for you from, and matter of fact, let me just pause here. Matter of fact, this is a perfect example of it. God saying, I have protection for you to keep you from falling away from the faith. Look at what he just said here. That as in verse 13, when, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he said that when that happens, that then is going to protect you from being tossed to and fro. See, that's the armor right there. Mm -hmm. That's us being edified and protected by God so that we're not tossed to and fro with all these people that are telling these different things, even concerning Jesus Christ. I mean, you can go to 10, 10 churches, you hear 10 different things that all disagree, you know, at, at 10 different churches. And so again, but as we're edified, we won't be tossed to and fro. We won't be able to go to this church and we hear something that's totally different over, uh, than what we heard mm -hmm. over there. Then we go to another church and we hear something totally different from those two. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he says that when we're built up in the faith, we won't be tossed to and fro. That's right. We won't be all over the place like a leaf flying in the wind. It's just going every direction. It has no, no true um, direction that it's going. And so again, my point with that is that God is saying, I protect you by edifying you, by building you up so that you are not carried about with all these different false doctrines that are out there. That he says, by the trickery of men, my, my, by the trickery of men. Again, so God is saying, I protect you. And this trickery of men, these men that are there tricking people with these false doctrines are there uh, uh, for the, uh, being used by Satan in doing so. And so, so again, my point is that these men, these individuals who, are, who have the trickery are those who are being used and influenced by Satan is my point with that. And look at what it says regarding what Satan is attempting to do and wanting to do. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. 
It says, but even if our gospel is veiled, the word veil means the person is blinded to it. They have a veil over their eyes. He says, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. So he's the one who does the veiling. Now, who's the God of this age? Satan. We've talked about that. And again, this is what spiritual warfare is all about. The God of this age has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. And so it, we, it shows here that this same gospel that we read earlier that causes a person to come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the same good news of what Jesus Christ uh, um, has uh, done the same gospel that causes a person to be edified in Jesus Christ. Satan is wanting to keep people blind to. He wants to keep people from being able to see it. He doesn't want that, and he ultimately wants them to continue on down your road and just ignore that Jesus stuff. Mm -hmm. Ignore, ignore that good news of what it is that he's done, or he wants you to be in churches that don't truly present. The truth of the gospel present a, a false gospel and again and that's my point with this he uh, satan attempts to keep people blinded from the gospel by again keeping people unsaved walking down that road of deception or even people in churches by hearing another gospel and look at what it says over here in second corinthians chapter 11 it says for i am jealous of you this is paul speaking to the Corinthians. I'm trying not to go too fast, y'all. I'm sorry if I am. But I'm, I'm trying to just connect some dots here. Well, I'm trying to show you that. And th this, let, me just, let me just connect the dots uh, without going through the scripture real quick. We come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are then edified by continuing to hear the good news of what Jesus Christ has done. As we grow and mature, we are then protected from all these deceptions and these lies that are out there that are attempting to get people all over the place, mm -hmm. believing all types of different things. And I'm saying that the people who are preaching all of that false doctrine are being used by Satan That's to right. keep people blinded from the truth of the gospel. That's so right. it's like I'm, I'll present a different Jesus to you so that you don't believe in the truth. Mm -hmm. You get that? Mm -hmm. And so that is, again, what Satan is attempting to do to keep a person blind. It's just like, if I'm focused on a false gospel over here, what about the true one over there? I'm blind to it. I can't see it. Mm -hmm. And that's Satan's goal. That's what he's attempting to do because ultimately he still wants, as we read earlier, he still wants men to walk down that same course they've always walked down. That same course of being so focused and consumed with me instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so now, coming to this scripture, it says in verse 2, For I am jealous of you, this is jealous for you, with godly jealousy. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He says, For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as chaste virgins, to Christ. And that's what he's saying again. Through faith in Christ, there's like a marriage there between us and him. We become one, just like in marriage, the two become one. Well, we become uh, one with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, I'm jealous for you that uh, uh, I'm jealous for you with godly jealousy because I prepared you for just one husband. Mm -hmm. Now he's, mm -hmm. I prepared you to just simply believe in the true Jesus Christ. But look at what he says that I may present you as chaste virgins to Christ. He says, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, who the serpent represent? Satan. Satan again. He deceived Eve uh, uh, by his craftiness, by his subtlety, by his small little white lie he added to God's word. Oh my. By his subtle little lie, he says, I'm, I'm fearful, I fear that your minds, just like Eve was, will be corrupted from this simple message, mm -hmm. the simplicity that is in Jesus Christ. Now watch this, this is the point I want to make. For if he who comes, look what he says, preaches another Jesus. He says, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. This is what Paul is saying. I'm jealous for you. I prepared you to believe and trust in Jesus. 
But I'm afraid that you guys are listening to these individuals who are presenting a different gospel. They're saying Jesus, but it's not the truth of what Jesus came to do. And in doing that, they have, uh, they're convincing you to have an affair with a false Jesus instead of the true one through true faith in him. Through you listening to their false presentation as to what Jesus Christ has done and has provided for you, you're then turning your heart away from the true one. And he says, that's what my fear is. And again, my point with that is that that is all a work of Satan. Trying to keep people blinded to the true gospel. Again, just like I said before, what is the, the true gospel we've talked about? The true gospel is what Jesus Christ died for my sins and through faith in him, I could be right with God. Well, what's another gospel? Now you got to get this together and fix this in order for God to accept you. Now think about this now. So if I accept that, what do I do with the other gospel? Automatically reject it. Now, if I come to faith in Jesus Christ, I'm married to him. But now I heard this other person telling me something else. I'm interacting inappropriately from a marriage standpoint with another Jesus. Y'all get that? You get that? All because of what I allow to be planted into my heart as truth. And so that's why, again, going back to this scripture, that is Satan attempting to keep people blind to the gospel. Y'all get that? Because he, in order to keep people from, again, beholding and allowing the light of the true gospel to shine, he says, I'll just give you another one. And your back will be turned to the true one then. And again, and when that is the case, you won't be able to see all of the benefit and all of the help, all of the strength, all of the changing that only comes through, again, beholding the true gospel. That makes sense? Yes. And again, that's why my point with it is that this is all spiritual warfare. And what Satan is wanting to keep people to uh, prevent people from, from doing is continuing in the faith. They came to faith in Jesus Christ. They came and they trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ that they were saved and they was by grace and grace alone. They were in the faith. But then now all of a sudden they heard somebody else tell them this other gospel. And what did they do with the faith? They departed from it at that point. Still saved now, thankfully. If I was, they were truly saved, they're still saved. But now they departed from the faith and now they're not able to experience all that, what, all that Jesus Christ has provided for them and wanted to do because they listened to a different gospel and heard a different Jesus preach to them. That makes sense? All of that, again, is an attempt by Satan to deceive and keep people in the place that they were the whole time. Because, again, just like uh, if I listen to that false gospel, where does it make that focus? On me. If I listen to that gospel that tells me I got to get this together and I got to fix this in order to stay right with him, where's the focus? Jason. Jason. On what Jason got to get together, what Jason got to fix. But again, if I hear the true gospel, where's my focus? On what Jesus has done, what he's going to do. And again, so, um, and I'm operating in the faith at that point when I do that. And again, so Satan, what he wants to do is he wants to send people to preach these other doctrines, these other gospels, yeah. so that people can be stirred away from the faith. And again, in, in Galatians, it shows another example of that. Look what it says in verse 6. It says, I marvel that you are turning away, look at this, so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ. So he's talking to these believers, these individuals who had just gotten saved recently. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm surprised y'all don't turn away this fast. Look what he says. He says, uh, um, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of, of Christ. Look what he says. To a different gospel. So he shows that when you turn to this different gospel, what do you do? You turn away from the true one. You turn away from God. You're turning away from what it is that he has provided. And he says here. In verse 7, he says, which is not another, but okay. there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the yes. gospel of yes. Christ. See, they'll say it's about Jesus. Mm -hmm. They'll yeah. say, yeah, 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 it's about God. But they won't present the truth of what it is that he's done. The truth 
of the good news of what it is that he's done. And my point with that is the point is to turn people away from the faith, mm -hmm. to turn mm -hmm. people away from true faith in Christ. And he sends, Satan does, people to proclaim right. these false That's gospels right. in order to turn people away from the truth. And again, this is, again, what I'm doing is I'm concluding this study on spiritual warfare to show that this is all spiritual warfare is about. It's about a fight of the stay in the faith. That you again, God is saying, I will give you protection from the lies and the deceptions that the enemy face uh, presents to you. Because what, if I am fixed in the fact and in my heart, I, I am brought to the conclusion that I am right and only right by what Jesus Christ has done through his death, burial, and resurrection. When somebody comes and tries to present to me, to, to tell me that, no, Jason, you're right. If you get this together, what will I do? I'll reject that. Mm -hmm. That lie won't be able to find room in my heart. You get that? Yeah. It won't be able to make room in my heart. So God says, I'll protect you to, so that you can continue down that road of faith so that you don't listen to those that pervert the gospel. Right, so you won't you won't listen to them. I give you protection. But again, not everyone is allowing that protection to be right, to be to work. And that's what we have to continue to do. Just like I'm, I'm gonna go back to this scripture real quick, but just like it says here, that through us being equipped and edified, we will be matured and not tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. As a result of us growing. It'll protect us from the lies and the deceptions of being tossed to and fro with all these different false doctrines that are out there. And so God is, but not everyone is allowing that to take place. And that's what we have to continue to do because the enemy, hit me, he's constant. He's constant with his lies. He, he's going to present lies to you in your thought life, in your mindset. All of that is going to continue to try to be working in you all these lies that say yeah you just did that you know god gonna get you now you know you you know he ain't, he, he gonna you know take these blessings away from you because you ain't fixed that over there right you you know and see the enemy is constant with that and we have to be constant and being edified so that we can fight that That's right. we can fight the good fight of faith did you have something yes yeah, so. <laughs> The scripture comes to mind in uh, Ephesians 4 and 5 where uh, Paul said, one Lord, one faith, mm -hmm. one man. Mm -hmm. And that's where the enemy want to work it. He presents to you more than one Lord. Oh my goodness. He presents to you more than one faith. My, 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 and my. And he presents to you more than one baptism. My, my, you my. You got the baptism of sprinkling. Oh you my. You got the baptism <laughs> of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I oh have my. a baptism of fire. My, my. Did, 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 but nevertheless, he said it's one baptism. My, my, my. It's one Lord. My, my. And one faith. My. And we got many lords. Buddha. Oh, goodness, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Satan uh, himself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Islam and whatever. Yeah, we got, all that. We yeah. have other faiths. I have faith in the substance I own. My goodness. And my finances. My goodness. And my job. My goodness. So we got to look at... Uh, 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 when we get to that part, where there's only one Lord, my. one faith, and one baptism. Yeah. Lord, what you mean? My, my, my. Show me. Yeah. And absolutely. only God can show me. Absol absolutely. And again, mm -hmm. and He will edify us to the place where, again, we'll be able to, again, be protected from all those false mm -hmm. faiths, those false things that are presented. But again, we have to allow that to take place. Mm -hmm. We have to allow that to take We have to allow ourselves to be edified. And brought to the place. Because if not, this is going to happen. Verse 14, that you be tossed to and fro. Right. Hit me, I've been there. Right. I, I've been there where I heard this and I heard that. You know, one moment I feel like I'm all right with God. Another moment I feel like I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And because and I, it was because of what I was hearing. Yes. Right. And what yes. the enemy was attempting to plant into my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the lies. And so it wasn't until I was edified that whenever those lies came, I could... Cast them down. Yes. And they wouldn't have room. And so that's the purpose again of the being edified. Because again, the enemy is constant is his in his attempts to pervert the gospel. Mm -hmm. to, Cause see, this is the thing. For those of us who come to faith in Christ, we we in many cases aren't 
uh, um, brought to the place where we'll believe that that, that uh, Islam and, and and fall away from faith and start believing in Hinduism and and things like that. But what we'll start believing is these individuals who will present a, just a different Jesus to it, though. Yes. Sure, we'll we'll we'll, pe- we'll 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 start believing folks that that are taking the Bible now, the, the same Bible we got, but they'll start perverting it and start twisting it. We'll we'll start accepting that, and that's what God is saying. More so for us, we need to be protected from these per- these perversions of the gospel. And so again, what Satan does is he sends people to pervert the gospel mm-hmm. so that we can be tossed to and fro. And look at what it says over here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. It says, but there were also false prophets among the people. He's speaking of in the Old Testament. At that time, they had false prophets, those that were saying that they were speaking for God, they had false ones. Well, he says, even as there will be false teachers right now among you. Now, watch what he says. Uh, um, Who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Even denying the Lord who bought them. He says, and bring on themselves swift destruction. Now, catch this in verse 2. And many will follow their destructive ways Mm -hmm. because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. Again, the enemy sends these false teachers for the purpose of, again, causing other people to follow that same pathway of deception, that same Mm -hmm. destructive way. Again, just like going back over here in Galatians chapter 1. What happened was some false teachers were sent into the into the, the that church in Galatia, and they started preaching some other some false stuff, and that's why Paul had to come back and say, "I'm surprised y'all turned away so soon. Y'all listening to these false teachers, and now y'all have been turned away from the gospel by listening to a perverted one, yes. by listening yes. to a false one." And that's again. So my point with that is that the Satan sends these individuals so that they can continue, they can walk down these destructive ways, bring in these destructive heresies, these lies, these clear deceptions, mm-hmm. and, and so that people, many, will follow their destructive ways, so that many will listen to what they're saying and accept it as truth. Satan sends people for that purpose. And again, what it says over here in 1 Timothy, Chapter 4, verse 1 through 2. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will, look, depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. He says, giving, how? Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines. Doctrines of demons. Uh, uh, Meaning, these false doctrines out there. It's not about a doctrine about a demon. It's a a doctrine that a demon is behind that deception, Mm -hmm. that lie. And again, speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Again, all of that comes through what is spoken. Speaking lies as a result of people listening to these lies, giving heed to them, they depart from the faith. And again, that's what Satan is wanting to happen. And that's what God is saying. I build you up in me to protect you from that, to protect you from falling away from the faith, from departing from the faith, uh, and where you, when these these doctrines and these lies are spoken to you, they'll be cast down. Mm -hmm. They won't find room in your heart. Mm -hmm. That's what God is saying, I'll protect you with and I'll keep you from. And then it says over here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says in verse 16, but shun profane and idle babbling. So he said all this stuff that these folks are saying that ain't nothing. Shun them and, and, and uh, shun these profane and idle babblings. He says, for all they do will increase more ungodliness. Yes. Now what did God say my gospel is going to do? It's going to increase the change in your life. It's going to increase uh, 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 and cause you to live differently. It's going to cause you to grow more and more. Well, these Profane and idle babblers, all they do is just increase the more ungodliness. He says, and their, but look what he says, and their message will spread like counsel. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning what they're saying, people are going to eat it up. Like it's the, the best thing since sliced bread. 
He says, Himenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. He says, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is past, saying, they said words, he says, is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some as a result of what they say. And again, my point with this again is just to show that what Satan is attempting to come against is that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Where we That's simply right. trust in what it is that he has done. And God is saying, I guarantee the change. Mm -hmm. I guarantee the renewing. I guarantee the leading. All you have to do is trust in me. What the enemy is wanting to do is let me come with lies and deceptions that cause you now to walk that same course you walked before, yes, which was right. what? The focus of me. That's yes, right. What I got to get together, what I got to fix, what I got to stop, what I deserve, what I'm supposed to have. All yes, me, right. me, 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 me. That's what the enemy wants. And God is saying, no, I have provided for you everything you need in me. And as you learn that and grow in that, you won't fall for the deception that the enemy has in place to get mm -hmm. you back focused on you again. Mm -hmm. You won't depart from the faith. And from the moment we initially come to faith in Jesus Christ, that fight is on. That's All right. the way up That's until right. we leave this place. The enemy ain't stopping. That's He's right. constant with the people. You watch radio, you listen to radio, you watch TV, you talk to people at your job. And, right. it's, it's, right. and hear me, and then your thought life as well. The thoughts that come into your mind, all of that is a fight against the truth of Jesus Christ. That's right. That's it's constantly right. coming against that. And God is saying how you are protected is by allowing that truth to be fed into your heart. You yes. have to be constant with that because, because Satan is constant. That's He's right. constant. That's he ain't stopping. And, uh, and so we have to allow ourselves to be constantly allowing the truth of what Jesus Christ has done to be imparted into our hearts so that it can protect us from the lies that the enemy wants to do. And that way we'll be able to say what Paul said at the end of our lives, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I didn't depart from the faith. I wasn't moved. Again, how did he get to that place? He got to that place. by Again, because he told Timothy to do the same thing. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Well, how could Paul say at the end of his life that he had fought the fight, the good fight, and that he finished the race, he had kept the faith because he continued to humbly allow the truth of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to be poured into his heart. Mm -hmm. And so whenever the enemy attempted to come against that, he had so much truth in his heart. He had so much of the gospel in his heart. He had so much of what Jesus Christ had done in his heart that the enemy coming against that couldn't win. Uh -huh. That's the armor that God says, I give you to protect you from the lies and the deceptions of the enemy so that we'll be able to say at the end of our lives, we have fought the good fight of faith, right. that we have finished the course, that we throughout our lives in faith in Jesus Christ will be, were able to even aid in others that were, right. that were straying away from the faith or even those that were, weren't a part of the faith. We were able to what? Through our lives, through the words that we said, able to influence them to come to the faith as well. Our family members, our co-workers, our, all these individuals, again, the Lord is saying that as you grow in the faith, again, the influence that I'm having on your life will be noticed by your family, by your friends, yes, by right. your co-worker, yes, and right. they'll be intrigued by that and be able to be drawn into the faith as well. Yes. See, all of that, again, is God saying we are fighting this good fight of faith through us staying in the place of true authentic faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, he's saying that we can be protected from the lies and the deceptions of the enemy. Anybody got anything before we get out of here?
<laughs> okay, cut off. Okay, that's fine. Um, I got one thing to say. The scripture reminds me the children of darkness are wiser than the children oh, of light. My, my. And in that, we look at the secret service, they don't, um, um, they know real money. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or what have you. So they, they, they learn about studying it, they know it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. They recognize the faith. Oh, when, it's, when it's being passed around, my, my. and we gotta recognize that uh, 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 the truth oh, my. Oh, I as it's you. presented as a lie, oh, when I, if we use it often enough, if it's being used often enough, my. there's consequences. My, my. Yes, yes. Have, and even like so with the uh, secret service, counterfeit money, mm -hmm. counterfeit gospel. Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you bring forth counterfeit gospel, you're gonna have to answer to God. My, my. Oh my, and, that, and that's so true. It, it talked about that. We remember we read that. It said that 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 that. Uh, just going back to that real quick, where he says here, these false teachers among you were secretly bringing destructive heresies, many destruction is at the end of that road. And uh, and so, but that is so true. And something I want to point out real quick as well, what you said regarding that true money and that counterfeit money. See, if you know the true money well enough. You'll be able to spot that exactly. counterfeit. Exactly. You'll be, see, it's not about studying all the different kinds right. of counterfeits. Yeah. Right. It's once you know the true, true money, true money right. you'll be able to recognize yeah. what's not the right. true money. It's yeah. the same right. thing. As we allow the truth of Jesus Christ in our hearts to flood our hearts, then we'll be able to spot the lies, yes. the deceptions. Yes. I don't have to read up on uh, yes. Islam. I don't have to read up on Hinduism. I ain't got to read up on, on all these, these false teachers out there and follow their doctrines to deceive. I don't have to do any of that. As long as I operate in the truth, I'll be able to spot it. Yes. And, that, and, yes. and it'll protect me from being, again, tossed to and fro. Because God is saying that I have, again, I have to say this, I have everything that you need provided in my son, Jesus Christ. You are right 100% of the time in my sight yes. on the basis of what yes. Jesus did. That yes. frees us from the guilt, yes. frees us from the condemnation that we experienced before. And we won't listen to the lies of the enemy that attempt to, to speak to us what will cause guilt and condemnation. In the same way, God is saying, I, by my spirit, is I am going to do a work in you of changing you, renewing you, leading you, guiding you. And therefore, when that is known in my heart, it frees me from trying to fix me, frees me from trying to get myself together, frees me from, from again, trying to convince others that they need to get themselves together. They need to fix them. It'll, 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 it will remind me that again, that only by Jesus Christ, only by the change that he, he brings will true change come to my life. Again, and that will protect me from the lies that people present to me and the worldly thinking that people give, the psychologists and all these different folks that try to give me worldly means of fixing me. I won't give ear to that. And that's what God is saying, that I want to be able to, to again, Keep you in the faith that you initially started in. Grow that faith and see the change in your life. Amen? Amen. Lord, we just bless you. We honor yes. you and we praise you. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for your gospel. Yes. Thank you for your good news. Thank you for what it is that you have done all yes. by yourself. We truly know, oh Lord, that you said that those that boast will only be able to boast in the Lord. Only boast. No better time than right no now. Better time than now. You the turn. For you to turn back to God. Tomorrow's not promised.